Have you ever wondered how, when you type in a command name, your shell actually manages to find the program that you wish to run? Suppose I type in ls. Now, what's happened here is that the shell has actually found a file on the Unix hard disk called ls. It's actually a program. Importantly, this program is stored in a file, and the file obviously lives in a directory. ls has obviously managed to find that particular file and start it. How did it do that? How did it know where to look? Specifically, if I type in an imaginary command called abc, and it says command not found. Now, it only took about half a second for it to determine that that command was not found. What I'd like to know is, how does it know? Has it scanned the entire Unix system looking for an executable file called abc, failed to find it, and said, OK, well, there isn't one, so command not found? What's the process involved? The path environment variable is used by the shell to determine exactly what directories to look in to find the executable programs, in other words, to find the commands that you type in. It sort of works like this. You type in a command name, like abc, or ls, or something like that. The very first thing that uh, the shell does is it looks in your path environment variable and determines the directories that then must be looked in to find the command that you've typed. Path, the environment variable, typically contains five, six, maybe ten directories at most that could possibly contain the programs that you're looking for. So the shell will look in each one of those in turn, starting with the first one in the list, until it finds the program that you're looking for, at which point it simply runs the program. So if you've typed in ABC, it'll start looking through each of the directories in turn for a file called ABC that is executable. If it finds one, it executes it, and it does not continue looking. So if there's a second one in one of the other directories, two files, both called ABC, then only the first one ever gets run. If it looks through each of the uh, directories, say 10 of them, and it doesn't find an executable file called ABC, then it gives out the little message, command not found. So let's have a look at our path environment variable. We do that by typing echo dollar path on the command line, and this is what we see. It seems to be one great big long directory, but you'll actually find that it's not a directory, it's a series of directories, each separated from the next by a colon. Can you see that? Slash home slash mvirtue slash bin colon. So that's obviously the first directory, followed by slash user slash local slash bin colon slash bin colon slash user slash bin and so on. In fact, that is how the shell environment variable path is interpreted by the shell. It's a list of directory names separated by a colon. Now, the interesting thing about all this is that you can add your own directories to the list. Or if you want to, you can even replace the list as follows. You can type in on the command line path equals and then specify a list of directories in which you want the shell to look for your executable files. Now, if all you want to do is stick another directory on the end, then you need to obviously take whatever was in path before and put colon and then your directory name on the end of that. Now, it's easy enough to say whatever was in path before because you can just use dollar $path. Remember, dollar $path always represents the contents of the path variable. So you can take the contents of the existing path variable, then put on the end a colon, and then you can put another directory, and you can put all of that back into the path variable. Alternatively, you can say path equals, and then put something at the beginning of the path. In this case, I'm putting dot colon at the beginning of the path, before the dollar path that you see there. And what do you suppose the dot means? Yep, well, that's it. It means the current directory. So what I'm actually specifying here is that I want the shell to look in the current directory first for any program that I might want to run. Now this implies, correctly, that the shell does not look in the current directory by default when looking for the location of the programs that you want to run. Now that's different to DOS. If you've ever used DOS or even Windows, DOS and Windows both look in the current directory first 
to try and find the executable program that you've specified. And if they can't find it in the current directory, they always then go and look in your path variable. So it's true that DOS and Windows also have a path variable, which they use for exactly the same reason. The developers of DOS, Microsoft, Bill Gates et al, copied this directly from Unix, which is exactly why DOS appears to be a stripped down version of Unix from time to time. So let's have a bit of a play with our path variable. There is the environment variable path set. Now what if I set it to something else? What if I set it to some garbage value, and then I try to type in the name of a command, like who, for example. Who command not found. This means, of course, that the, the shell does not know where to look to find the who program, or at least it knows where to look, but the place that I specified for it to look doesn't actually exist. So where might I go to find those programs? Well, let's have a look in slash bin. Slash bin is a place where lots of executable programs are stored. Not all of them, but lots. And if I try an ls minus c, well I can't even do an ls, but what I can do is an echo. I can echo star. And there's the names of all the programs in the current directory. The reason that echo worked whereas ls didn't is that echo is part of the shell. It's a command that is built into the shell. It's not a separate executable file anywhere. So I could say, all right, well, there's obviously some programs in here, so path equals slash bin. And now my ls will actually work. 